secret emails, confidential information, sensitive data. There are some secrets which we only want to share with certain people, especially in politics, business and banking. It would be fatal if other people listened in. But it happens all the time, through loan hackers or the world's secret services, even if the messages are carefully encrypted. But the problem may soon be solved. At the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Light in Erlangen, a group of scientists is doing research into the encryption technology of the future. Cryptography that will allow the truly secure transmission of data. To make this work, physicist Gerd Leuchs and his team have to immerse themselves in a mysterious and strange world. The world of quanta. The world's secret services will most certainly have mixed feelings about this development because it will give them an advantage regarding the data encryption they create themselves, which in principle will be absolutely secure. But others will share the same advantage too. That means that listening in will be virtually impossible. By encryption, we mean that, for example, a text which can be clearly read is transformed into an illegible secret message. In any case, when texts are transmitted in the digital world, every character is converted into a code consisting of zeros and ones, binary code. In our example, the capital T in top secret has the binary code 010. An agent can now use a computer program to change the code. Then the T, for example, becomes the code 011. And all the other characters acquire a new code. In this way, the agent can create an encryption table, the so-called key. And now she can use this to encrypt her real message, which she then sends to a friendly agent. Beforehand, she's told him the key. So his computer can decrypt the secret message and make it legible. The problem, however, is that an enemy agent could intercept the key. And even if he only intercepts the encrypted message, it will still not be secure. Because the key was created using a computer program, and that means using mathematical methods. Theoretically, any code can be broken, assuming, for example, that sufficient computing power is available. In the quantum world, things are different. Firstly, a quantum key cannot be intercepted unawares. And secondly, no one can decrypt a quantum key, because it's not generated using a mathematical algorithm, but by true randomness. In everyday life, we often talk about randomness, but these processes are not really random. For example, throwing dice. I throw the dice, and if I throw the dice a second time, I will get different numbers, and we think we can't predict them. But in fact, if we have enough information about angles, positions and velocities, we would be able to predict the numbers on the dices in advance. It's similar with so-called random numbers, which the computer generates. The keys, which we produce, could be cracked with sufficiently high computer power. But if we take the random numbers from the quantum world, they really are true random numbers, which generate a code which is absolutely secure. True randomness exists only in the quantum world, when we intervene in that world by making measurements. Quanta are the smallest units in the world we live in. The scientists in Erlangen work with the quanta of light, with photons. Light can have different quantum states, and the scientists use this in order to encrypt information in the form of zeros and ones. If the sender and the receiver want to use quanta as their key, it works in principle as follows. The sender agent generates quantum states that serve as quantum bits. This happens completely randomly, with the help of a quantum random number generator. She then sends a series of these quantum bits to the receiver, a friendly agent. The sender and the receiver then use the quantum bits that have been sent to generate a key, which only the two of them know. The enemy agent could still attempt to intercept the key and hence to read the transmitted quantum bits. 
But if she does so, an astonishing thing will happen. The quantum states change noticeably. This lies in the nature of the quanta. The very act of reading and measuring quantum states modifies them. The sender and the receiver notice this, and the enemy agent's cover is blown. And also, if she only intercepts the messages which are encoded using this key, she will not be able to decode them, because the code was not calculated using pseudo-random programs, but was determined by true randomness. So, in principle, the scientists have the physical tools to generate an unbreakable key with which to encrypt messages. And they can also guarantee that the key cannot be intercepted en route from the sender to the receiver without this fact being noticed. But if this procedure is to be used worldwide for sending messages, we will also need a global and affordable technological infrastructure. Quantum keys can already be distributed via glass fiber if the distance is not too great, for example, within a large city. And they're already being used by some banks. But if the distance is too great, the signal will become too weak and the process will no longer work. Of course, people are interested in using it across longer distances to reach anywhere on Earth. And that will only be possible via satellite. That's what we're working on. If scientists can achieve this, then quantum communication worldwide could become a reality. It isn't difficult to equip new satellites for this purpose. But it would also mean that the quantum states would have to be transmitted through the air. Here, the scientists are faced with two challenges. Sunlight and turbulence in the air disturb the transmission. Several years ago, scientists actually succeeded in transmitting quantum states through the air, but only in the form of individual photons, a technology that is severely disturbed by daylight. But Gerd Leuks and his team recently achieved, quite literally, a real quantum leap. They succeeded in transmitting through air in daylight. The trick, instead of individual photons, the scientists in Erlangen used laser flashes to transmit the quantum states. The strong laser flashes and their light waves act as the carrier signal. They are relatively robust in daylight. The scientists pack the real quantum signal inside. This uses a method that was already known in radio technology. Nobody had tried to use it with laser light and quantum states, however. Sunlight is white and has a broad spectrum of colors. The quantum signal, on the other hand, is produced by just one single color. And so is the carrier wave. And the important point is, the action of the carrier wave corresponds to a very narrow spectral filter. This means that the sunlight and its broad spectrum are filtered out. So finally, the quantum signal, with its narrow spectrum, is dominant. So we're left with just one problem. Turbulence in the air can disturb the transmission. The distance across which the scientists in Erlangen want to transport the laser flashes and quantum states in daylight amounts to 1.6 kilometers, from the Max Planck Institute to the receiver at the Friedrich Alexander University. In between, trees, hot streets and buildings produce severe turbulence. This can change or destroy the quantum states. So the scientists have recourse to yet another trick. We made use of a pair of characteristic parameters of light which are not affected by turbulence in the atmosphere, and that is polarization. Polarization is the direction of oscillation of the electromagnetic wave. You can visualize this in the following way. If the light propagates in a particular direction, then the light can oscillate, for example, in a horizontal direction, or it can oscillate in a vertical direction. And it would look more or less like this. These two directions of oscillation will not be changed by turbulence, and that's why this is the perfect way to encode the signals. And indeed, after 1.6 kilometers, the photon packets arrive at the receiver station at Friedrich Alexander University. The detector is able to capture and measure the laser light and its quantum signals. 
1.6 kilometers doesn't sound much in comparison to the 36,000 kilometers which the signal would have to travel to reach a geostationary satellite. But in fact, the difference is not that big. The atmosphere is densest in the vicinity of the ground, and that is also where the turbulence is the strongest. If you want to avoid that, the fastest way is the route upwards, because you very quickly reach a region where space is void of air, and where these disturbances do not occur. The distance which you have to cross in a vertical direction in the atmosphere is about three times as great as the distance which we have already tested in our experiment. So this means that we're already very close to reaching our goal. The scientists in Erlangen have achieved considerable progress in quantum cryptography with their experiments. The next stage will be first experiments with geostationary satellites. If they too are successful, then worldwide quantum communication could become reality in just a few years. And then secret services and hackers will have a much harder time of it.